The two most important numbers on YouTube right now are 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. Well, let me introduce you to a third number, 10. That's 10 top tips to help you get to this one. Let's roll. Hello everyone, welcome back to vidIQ and my name is Rob. If this is your first time here, we are the YouTube tool and service that aims to help you get more views in less time. Our tool is of course free to download, a link is in the description and while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of our content. The YouTube partner program or monetization on your channel. The rules have changed recently. Now you need 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 hours of watch time. We've already done a detailed video on 10 tips to get to 1,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already watched that one, click right here, right now. If you have already got 1,000 subscribers, good job. Now let's move on to 4,000 hours of watch time. It may seem daunting, but the first thing you need to look at when trying to achieve this goal is perspective. There's two ways of looking at this. You can make the numbers that sound daunting or manageable. 4,000 hours of watch time, it's 240,000 minutes or 166 days of people watching your videos. That sounds pretty terrifying, doesn't it? Or you can look at it from a much more manageable perspective. 4,000 hours is 240,000 minutes of watch time. Divide that by 12, as you need that watch time over 12 months, that becomes 20,000 minutes. Now you need 1,000 subscribers, so let's say 1,000 people watch your videos on a regular basis. That means you need 1,000 people to watch 20 minutes of your content a month, or less than one minute of your content each day from those 1,000 people, to reach your goals. So don't make things harder than what they appear. Break it down into manageable chunks. And a special mention to Kids vs Dad Gaming who introduced me to this mathematical concept. So on the one hand, if we have perspective, on the other hand, what we need is patience. Rome wasn't built in a day. Your YouTube channel is not going to be built in three or four weeks. You have 12 months to reach these requirements. And once you do meet these targets, YouTube is not going to immediately monetize your content the day after you'll have to go through a review process. So if you're always chasing these things that are in control of a, another entity, you're gonna continually frustrate yourself. Now what's much less frustrating is our real-time stats bar that sits at the top of all YouTube pages when you install our vidIQ Chrome extension. It tracks your progress to 4,000 hours of watch time over 12 months with a breakdown graph and a progress bar if you mouse over the statistics. When you hit the 4,000 hours requirement, the metric turns from amber to green. For more information on this tool, click on the card on screen now. Okay, now for some practical tips about being a YouTuber and getting those 4,000 hours of watch time. YouTube is often about differentiating yourself from the crowd, doing something different but familiar. I know that may sound odd, but the chances are, if you just have a simple idea about doing gaming videos or beauty videos or vlogging videos, the chances are it's already been done. You need to personalize it. Take control of your own content. Find a particular niche. Be the best YouTuber that you can be for your content to deliver a valuable message to your audience. Take this as an example. Brick Built Replicas has 8,000 subscribers and 800,000 video views. The channel is about recreating life-size functional Lego replicas of iconic video game weapons from games such as Counter-Strike and Call of Duty. Now these two topics, Lego and gaming, are highly saturated markets on YouTube. But look what happens when you mesh the two together. You create something unique, something eye-catching. You may be familiar with both Lego and video games, but you've never seen them used in this way. As a fan of both, it makes me want to click on the videos and watch what they're all about. Now there was no overnight success for this channel, the video creator has painstakingly been making these videos for a couple of years now, but slowly interest has built and finally he's had a couple of breakthrough videos which have brought in hundreds of thousands of views. The YouTube audience is always looking for something new, something exciting, but something that they can also associate with. The question is, can you deliver such a thing? Now, if you're not comfortable with creating new ideas, you can chase trending or current ideas. But if you're a small channel, you've got to be strategic about this. Let's say you bought an iPhone 10 when it was first released. If you're a small channel, do you really think you can compete with the larger tech channels when it comes to unboxings, reviews, general guidance on how to use a device? You're gonna get swamped by all the other larger tech channels. 
So you may want to concentrate on one particular feature on the device which you can really dominate with unique content, such as looking at an emojis. When I was a very small tech YouTubing channel, I spent years trying to find a niche. And when I finally discovered one, I decided to put all of my efforts into it and eventually dominated it. Try searching for iPhone screen recorder and you may see a familiar face. For the full story on that, click right here. And next up, and something that's often spoken about when it comes to YouTube fundamentals, is consistency. Now, there's a couple of ways we can look at this. There is the most obvious form of consistency, which is to post content on a regular basis. Whether it be every day, every week, every couple of weeks, whenever you have the opportunity to post new content on YouTube, that's gonna benefit your channel. Usually, the majority of your video views come from the first 48 hours of your video's life. So if you can publish more videos, that obviously means you're gonna get more views and more watch time. Now, understandably, for some channels, that's not as easy as it might be. Vlogging may take an hour to make the video and edit it, whereas if you're doing animation or drawings, that could take weeks, even months. So think about how you can maximize this opportunity. Maybe you wanna do a time lapse of a quick run through of one of your drawings, or a behind the scenes episode on some animation, or some way to produce content that keeps the viewer interested and engaged in between what you would call your hero videos. You could also try and repurpose content. Let's say, for example, you do short tutorials. Well, if you have three or four tutorials on the same subject, maybe you can put them all together in one piece that's maybe 10 to 12 minutes long, and you've got a perfectly sized YouTube video. Now, the other side of consistency is your message or your value proposition. Let's say you're interested in wrestling, video games, TV shows, the Dallas Cowboys, and you cover all of these topics in different videos. That's just gonna confuse the audience. They're not really sure what your channel's about, and I see this time and time again when I do channel reviews on vidIQ. So when you're a small channel trying to find your niche, really focus on what you are truly the most passionate about and throw everything into that area of interest. To summarize this point, I'm gonna borrow a phrase from the legendary YouTube consultant, Tim Schmoyer, who says, who should be watching and why should they care? I've done a whole video on this subject, so take a look if you're interested. It's really quite emotional. YouTube playlists, we've talked about them before, and you've guessed it, we're going to talk about them again. First of all, it makes sense to you as a video creator to put all of your similar content into one bucket. But for the viewer, when they click on a link to take them to a video playlist, if they enjoy one video, it will auto play onto the next video from your channel. So that's more watch time for you. When you have good content in good playlists, that really ramps up what we might call session watch time. The viewer is in your mini ecosystem in YouTube. And on average, audience retention is higher when viewers watch videos from playlists because they're more invested in your content. If you haven't already tried live streams on YouTube, you should at least give it one try. From a purely mathematical, economical point of view, if you get 40 people to watch one hour of a live stream, that's 40 hours, 1% of the way to your watch time goal. Now, yes, they can be daunting, and if you want to get a technical setup like this, it does take a little bit of time, but it's really good for practicing presenting in front of camera. And don't worry if you make one or two mistakes. In a live stream, you can certainly be forgiven for that. And live streams do represent the perfect opportunity to repurpose content. If you have a particularly astounding two minutes within a live stream, you can clip that from the live stream and present it as a brand new video to your audience. As you may have noticed on the vidIQ channel, one of our main goals this year is to do a lot more live streams and we're certainly benefiting from creating a much broader community and connecting personally with our audience and those live streams are bringing in more and more views and watch time every time we do one. Earlier on in this video, we talked about strategically targeting trending videos to get immediate quick boosts in watch time. But if you want sustained long-term watch time hours, the real money is in evergreen content. Whether you want to replace the tire on your car, unblock your toilet, or get more YouTube views, those terms were being searched for in 2008. 
They're being searched for today and they'll be searched for in 10 years time. Evergreen content is a tough nut to crack because video creators understand the value of these videos. So you again need to niche down, find something really specific that really interests you and you think you may find an audience for and then start producing content about it. This video in itself is a form of evergreen content. We think that YouTubers are going to be searching for the term how to get 4,000 hours of watch time for however long YouTube keep these new requirements in place. Hopefully, if we're successful with this video, it will rise to the top of the search terms on YouTube and people will be frequently visiting this content on a regular basis. And finally, when you put all of these techniques and strategies together and you're hustling through the YouTube world making video after video, keep a close eye on how they perform. When you see particular videos on particular topics or when you use a different style or whether you do live streams, double down on that content. YouTube is telling you what content it wants to see from you to deliver to an audience. And there should be no reason for you to dismiss it. Here at vidIQ, we practice what we preach. So this is a classic example. The YouTube changes to monetization have been a big story and we've covered it a lot. And every time we do, we notice more people joining in in the conversation, a bigger audience watching our content. So we've doubled down, more content, providing you with more tools. And these are the results. 80% increase in watch time, 250,000 minutes, we've met those requirements. And so can you, with these 10 top tips to help you get to 4,000 hours of watch time. And as a bonus tip, try list videos yourselves. These small bite-sized pieces of information contained within longer videos really do help with watch time. We'd love to hear your thoughts, ideas, and tips on helping people to get to 4,000 hours of watch time. Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And for more content just like this, subscribe to vidIQ. Enjoy the rest of your video making day. Good luck getting to 4,000 hours of watch time. Bye for now.